Off the coast of Anagata in the British Virgin Islands, navigators must be at the top of their game. Well, once we get in the middle of this, um, that looks like the right spot where we're going to drop our hook. We're in the middle of all these fish spots here. The water may appear calm and peaceful, but just under the surface lies the Horseshoe Reef and a perilous threat to even the most cautious ship captains. Photographer Kathy Salisbury and her expert dive team are here to explore the most unique of the reef's victims, Anagata's famous bone wreck. We are now right next to uh, the Rokas wreck here, which is actually charted, uh, right on the very tip of the uh, Horseshoe Reef. The Rokas itself was um, a bulk carrier. Uh, she went down in 1927 and she was carrying a consignment of animal bones uh, on their way to be made into fertilizer. And again, she uh, got a navigation wrong and uh, ended up parting the end of the horseshoe reef. So we should see a bunch of animal bones down there. You'll see a lot of bones, yeah. Good. It's, uh, the whole seabed is made of bones, yeah. Lots of jaws, lots of teeth. Okay, so you'll be able to find uh, kind of broken up jaws and this kind of stuff. You're very lucky you'll find a complete head. It's uh, funny seeing all this uh, dead stuff on the bottom. It's quite an eerie dive. On this uh, strange bone wreck. The bone wreck. Oh my god, another mystery. The pet cemetery. <laughs> Since the earliest recorded sinking of a Spanish vessel wrecked on Anagata in 1523, the reef system has been responsible for some 300 shipwrecks. I'll surface and wait when I'm ready, okay? The sea has gradually reclaimed those wooden vessels from the golden age of sail. But the remains of contemporary iron ships linger on. The Rokas, with its collection of bones, is a truly unique testament to the reef's history of destruction. In 1929, on its way from Trinidad to Baltimore with its cargo of cattle bones, the Greek freighter Rokas foundered here on the southern tip of Horseshoe Reef. Because of the unpredictable shallow water, dive boats can't anchor on the site. Kathy and crew use high-speed scooters to travel to the site as quickly as possible so that they can maximize their bottom time. The wreck is 115 meters long. While the stern lies in 12 meters of water, the bow is less than one meter below the surface. Until Hurricane Frederick in 1979, this bow projected out of the water and was used as a navigational marker. Other tropical storms have had their way with this site. The engine, boilers, winches, and anchor chain are intact. The rounded stern, deck railings, and superstructure are still visible. But the rest of the wreck is largely broken up. And the cargo of bones has been spread out across the seafloor, mixing with the coral. Bone is a relatively hard composite material, formed mostly of calcium phosphate. While it's essentially brittle, it does have a degree of elasticity contributed by the organic compound collagen. Organic materials are the first element to disintegrate when a ship falls to the bottom of the ocean. Like the metal frame that is left when the wooden planking of a ship has rotted away, these animal bones have been preserved by the salt water. The thousands of tiny pieces make for an eerie scene. Kathy's tank is running low, so the team begins to make its way back to the dive boat, just in time to catch sight of a stealthy barracuda. The rocus is an appropriate setting for this menacing looking carnivore. A perfect final touch to a hauntingly beautiful dream wreck.
sandwich. Yeah, I really like those boilers. Lots of uh, lots of jaws and lots of femurs, but I didn't see any skulls. Oh, lots of teeth too. Yeah, I'm really glad we waited till later in the day because the light was beautiful. Yeah. Great time. Right right in. In. With the shallow depth of the bone wreck, the team needs only a two-hour surface interval before they can dive again.